gonna try to explain some common issues with Bose remote controls and uh, what you can do to try to fix these yourselves. Uh, I have been offering repair service for these for a while, but I'm discontinuing that service because I get so many remotes sent to me that aren't broken. Uh, either they must be either having power problems or the base radio doesn't receive the signal or it's uh, connected, uh, set up improperly um, with the dip switches and the settings on the base system have to match. Uh, so I get so many in and I, I can't fix it for them or they, they work fine and, and it's just more hassle than it's worth. So I'm going to go over some common problems that people can fix themselves. And there's a bunch of remotes here. Um, now the number one thing is buttons. Now if you have buttons failing, a failing button is going to be a button you use a lot, say like the volume or, or, or any buttons you use a lot. Um, it's not going to be necessarily like, say, the stereo center button here that you never touch. So if, if the volume buttons are going bad and it's hard to push, that means the button is failing. If all your buttons stop working one day, then it's not button failure, it's remote failure, and a button repair kit is not going to fix it. For instance, this remote board, somebody just mailed me this board back. They bought a keypad repair kit on Amazon, and then they claimed it didn't work, and sent it, wanted to return it. And this is what they sent me in the mail, is my keypad repair kit is installed on the circuit board, and, and they did a good job with that. However, the battery spring contact is busted off. So obviously, the remote was dead, um, and they try to get a button repair kit to fix their dead remote. And without power, it's not going to work. Um, the biggest issue that other people can fix on their own is the antenna on these. They break off. And, yeah, see, there's different... There, all these big remotes have the same or similar antenna. It's a coil of wire. This one is held with a couple rubber feet that come off that go into the housing, which is a better design. That's on some of the newer remotes. This is like a middle design where they tried to fix the problems by putting this glue in there, and it didn't, it didn't stop it. And some older ones are just the antenna on the end here with nothing keeping it from breaking off. And, you know, over the years, this vibrates, and the wire snaps off, usually right, you know, between the circuit board and this this ferrite beat rod here on one of the sides. The um, if, it, if it's just loose like this, it's easy to tell. You look and it's just, it's just flopping around. You might even shake your remote, you know, like this, and here it go clunk, 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 clunk. Um, when it's glued like this, it's a lot sneakier. You can't, you know, you look at it, oh, it's fine, you know, it's not broken, but it is. Um, if your remote is not working at all and you're sure the, the power is good and it's not like a damage from an old leaky battery, um, the first most likely explanation is the antenna. Now, when you have this glued antenna on here, if you have an ohm meter, a digital voltage meter, you can check the ohms between those two, and it should be like really low, like down like an ohm or so, you know, not 50 kilo ohms or something. It should be down to like an ohm, and you could even try to like kind of wiggle this because sometimes the wire is is cracked like 80 percent through, and it t it gets good contact sometimes like when it's like this, bent just a little bit, and then it's disconnected when it's like that. But, ultimately, the easiest thing to do is to just take the antenna off, and if it com comes off, you need a soldering iron for this. Let me turn mine on. And, but I I'll go down with a exacto knife. So there's a wire right there, and there's a wire right there. So I'll go down with the exacto knife, and just slide it across. Oop, look at that. So that was broken because it just went right through the wire. So this guy had a broken battery contact and a broken antenna. So, we definitely know that was broken. I'm going to 
trim off the wire over the glue over here a little bit. It seems it's very floppy, like it's it's almost broken through over there too. Yep. So that's an issue. So I'm gonna clean the the glue off. You know, you can don't tr don't try to scratch. If you use an exacto knife, you could scratch the circuit board. Although there's nothing too important up there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Or um, if you've got some tiny cutters or something, you don't need to get it all off. But we need to remove it around the solder points. Yeah, the um, the silicone, as far as I can tell, did absolutely nothing because it can still vibrate a little bit with that glue there and it breaks off inside. Most of the time I only see one broken off. Now, I have seen people try to fix this themselves by unwrapping one wire to make an extra length. And you can't do that. This is a tuned antenna. Um, we don't want to mess with the wires at all. If it sometimes it breaks off more of the wire and less of the wire, and if it's only one side, it's even it's it's easier to deal with because you can wiggle. Like you could the, the remote the the antenna was here, and you can if this one was still attached and this one was broken, and you needed a little extra length, you can kind of like shift it like that a little bit. In this case, I'm not sure that's going to work because we have to have both come closer and um, you know that I don't think there's going to be enough wire for that you can also as you see the one of one side the wire goes to the top and, and one side the wire is going to be around the bottom so to gain a little extra length to gain a little extra length you can kind of twist the antenna up a little bit and that would give you a little bit of length for the wire but in this case with both of them both sides broken off that would just shorten the other side yeah <clears throat> so like for instance if i if i solder this here then it's going to be harder for that one to reach over and get to that you might be able to get away with this I, most of the time I get away with it. Most of the time I can solder it back on. And a couple times I've used a small piece of copper wire. The size of the copper wire really isn't important. You can use house, you know, electrical wire ground, which is much bigger. But you're just using a tiny piece to sort of bridge the gap. Right? So you could get the wire, like, really close... But it's not going to make a nice, strong solder bond like that. But if you have another piece of wire, you could maybe have it wrapped around this. Just to add a couple millimeters of length. I'm going to look here. I think I'll be able to get that. So with this glue removed, I have a little bit extra space. I'll probably pick off some more of that glue. And I can get that wire close. Yeah, maybe. Um, I'm going to show you that in a minute. Before I get to that, I want to quickly go over some other issues. Um, this, oh yeah, this one was sent in for repair. And it has uh, battery corrosion. So battery leaked here. You can kind of, I'll try to. There's just a little bit of residue up here, which we want to clean up. And the important part is the battery spring. There's the back of this remote. Oh, yeah, that's that one didn't come with a housing. So this is the back. So the battery spring busted right off when they took this off. When you are taking them off, um, sometimes these springs get stuck. And when you're pulling the board off, like probably that's what happened here. This this person just yanked it and broke it off. This one was corroded, so it was going to come off anyway. But sometimes you need to kind of when you're when you're taking the 
remote apart and you're doing this last step and it's if it's giving you a lot of resistance just go in with a flat screwdriver and kind of poke it down a little bit you're not this one fell out because it's broken but you just give it a little help and maybe pull on it again and see if it just pops out if not just kind of push on it um and then you'll get that thing out now with this um, anytime you take one of these remotes apart, you're going to want to look for discoloration, corrosion, and clean it up. I'm using isopropyl alcohol, 90%. It can't damage anything on this board. I could dunk this in 90% isopropyl alcohol, wait an hour, and come back and clean it up, but then it wouldn't break anything. You don't need to do that. I'm just putting a little bit down, and you know you can see it's nasty. It's picking up uh, green, you know, it's eating away at some of this green coating. Luckily, this one is broken on the ground side. This is the plus side, you know, the, the, the little tab on the battery touches that, so it's the plus side. And the flat side touches this one, which is the ground side. So this is basically attached to this, this large area here. So it will be... Um, not a big deal to solder that back down after it gets cleaned up. I would clean it up with uh, either isopropyl or electronic cleaner and then scratch the corrosion off and get a nice shiny surface. Now if it's over here you'd have to be more careful not to scratch this part and then solder to it because then you'd short out the, the batteries. And then I've got another remote here that was also sent in. Oh, this one's got batteries in it. This one's got battery corrosion also, but it's not affecting the operation of the remote yet. It was down here. And these other remotes, is, uh, there's the 25, the 5, the 20, and the 9 that are all similar to this and these don't have as much problems with the antenna because they're not out on the edge flopping up and down they're on the board like this so I mean they could wiggle a little bit this way but but you know you, you use your remote you put it down and you know you shake it around or just a little bit that one on the end can wiggle this one can't so I don't really see these break very often if your antenna is great there's no battery corrosion you know it's got power you look around and there's nothing broken, um, the antenna's not broken, there's no corrosion, the springs look great, and it's still completely dead, does not work at all, and you verify that, I'll show you in a minute. It could be this crystal that's bad, and it's um, 27.145, that's for the RC. They always have, um, like in the American version, RC18S. 2-27 so that's the crystal 27 and I think um, like Australia maybe Europe has 41 or no 40 and that would be a different crystal and I'm not I don't see those so I'm not sure exactly what the number is um, but that's uh, if you want to get really deep into it that's the next thing I try as a crystal and if, if, if that's not it I usually if there's you know it's not really worth getting into and you just try to find another remote okay let's see got antenna corrosion crystal as far as button repair a lot of people are confused with buttons where their remote just stops working and they think it's buttons and a button repair kit will fix it um, but when the buttons wear out it's always the buttons you use a lot that wear out and the buttons you never use should still work um, the, there is one exception to that, and that's these newer um, 3818. Um, this one I can see has a membrane. So the circuit board, um, it's not a rubber. It's a rubber keypad, but then it's got, you can take this apart, it's got a plastic layer with little snap domes that have silver paint on them. And what can happen is the with heavy use the silver chips off and you can start to see maybe like little spots 
like there's the power button and you look down here at the volume there's like little spots where the button keeps hitting and what will happen is a little bit of that silver paint comes off just like a powder it's it's practically invisible um, even with a magnifying glass and it'll it'll short out one of these buttons and as soon as the button is short out the remote thinks you're sitting there holding down the volume up all the time so all it's doing is sending volume up signal constantly and draining your batteries and it won't accept any other button pushes so that can be repaired um, by cleaning it up and that can be the, the circumstance where one day all of your buttons stop working so that's a little bit tricky with those but if it's these older RC5, uh, 20, 25, and 9, and the RC28, this is a this is another 18 or 38, um, the RC28 has rubber buttons, those will always fail only for the buttons you use a lot. Um, so if it does have button problems, I have my button repair kit and I have different videos for that. And uh, it's a very skinny membrane keypad and then your buttons all you do is push down your button the your old button pushes down on the new button and there's a little gap in there so um, the uh, electrical contact is taken over by these and it's also sealed from any like if you drop a drink on this um, it can like get into a hole if you drop a lot of it and, and work its way over but that would be pretty serious spill damage. Um, now, if your buttons are failing, you can take your remote apart and just clean the buttons and it'll work for a little while. That is always temporary and you're just going to have to keep doing it. With this, you're putting in a layer and you're replacing your old rubber buttons with these new uh, buttons. And this should never wear out. I've, I've tested it for millions of button presses and, and um, years and I mean, I guess technically, if you, you know, watch a lot of TV and you're constantly changing the volume and after several years, you could probably wear it out. Um, but it's definitely better than the old rubber button and better than even a new rubber button as far as longevity. Um, okay. Now, the hardest part about this whole thing is your base unit can actually break and not be listening to remote control signals anymore. And how do you know? You, you're pushing a button. There's no indication that this is working or not. Uh, this this one is a newer one, and it, the like TV light will blink every time I push a button. So I know I know it's got power. I know it's <clears throat> the button is working. I know it's doing something. With these, you have no clue. You know, you push a button and you can't tell. I've got this radio signal detector, you know, that I use to tell when I push a button. But, you know, most people aren't going to have that. So one trick you can do to verify, okay, is my remote bad or is my base radio not seeing the remote signal anymore? Is uh, I've got an FM, I mean, a AM radio here, <clears throat> excuse me, and you can, this will interfere with the AM signal, but what you want to do is you want to find a quiet place, um, you know, if, if you're listening to loud static, you don't hear it very well, and it also is very <clears throat> picky about where the remote is positioned, depending on the radio, and I can't show you what radio you have, it's, they're all going to be different, um, but... I'm going to start with this one, because this one was really loud. Um, and I, I, it, each remote was different, and um, I would try different places on the AM band, and some the sound would change, and sometimes it would be louder in places and, and stuff. So you've got to kind of play with it and keep hitting your button and moving it around the radio like that just to see if you're picking up, um, you know, if, it can, if, if you can hear anything unusual. And we'll show you the different sounds these make. <clears throat> okay. Okay. 
Hi, Mike. I support, uh, I support both of them. Uh, but... There we go. So I couldn't hear it before, and I'm just, like, changing it around. Now this one, I'm holding the, like, if I hold the button down, yeah, and then you kind of hear that signal, and then I move this around. So it likes it right here. So now I, I have a way of saying, okay, it's, it's definitely sending out a signal. Um, so that works. Okay, see, so there we go. Yes, it's very picky on where I put it. Okay, wow, there we go. So there might be a, the the AM antenna might be down here. For these remotes, they all make that. Well, it depends on where you are on the band too. I got a little notice. This one. Yeah, that's pretty similar. And then. So that's how you uh, can verify that your remote is sending out a signal. It might take a little bit of effort. Now, the base unit can break. In fact, I've got two test base units that I picked up, you know, ultra cheap, and both of them are broken for the remote control. And I had to replace capacitors on the main board. It was extremely difficult. And I'm not going to show people how to do it because it was, it was, you're going to need a lot of experience with a soldering iron you know you can email me in and I can maybe help you if, if you think you can handle it but um, it was a you know I needed a special tools for testing capacitors and um, everything so that's a big deal let's see um, the other thing which I talk about on on my pamphlets and website is your base unit cannot receive it because it's programmed incorrectly um, it can be confused if you unplug it, wait a little while, plug it back in. Um, it might just start working again. And um, very important is the power cord for your base system is the antenna for the remote control to receive signals. So if you've coiled up your power cable, um, twisted it with other cables, coiled it up and tied it together to make it nice and neat, um, that could stop your remote from working. Um, it definitely would cause serious issues or, you know, re reduce your range of your remote. So you want that cable to just, the ideal thing, I think, is if your base is up off the floor, to just have it go straight down and over to a plug. Um, so you could play with that, maybe. Um, maybe you have a bunch of stereo equipment and the power cord is going behind it and there's a lot of interference with your, you know, other stereo parts or whatever you have in the same area, metal, anything with a signal can interfere with it. Large pieces of metal can block signals. So you can deal with that. So this last part, I'm going to show you how to solder back the antenna. And it's mostly, I'm going to, I'm going to speed up the video so you're not sitting there Be careful when you're soldering this on because it's going to need a lot of heat and you don't want to be touching the wires like holding it like this or anything because you'll burn your finger. Um, so I'm making sure I'm not touching the metal. Come down and put one end on and just try to get the solder to kind of flow up the wire. Hold it there for a couple seconds to make sure it hardens. So... You can see it's soldered on and 
think I can twist it down. Now that it's soldered, I can try to bend it a little bit. Yeah, it's not quite going to reach. Right? So I'm going to add a piece of copper to this. Okay. Got a big piece of, you know, this is overkill for the size of the wire. I'm only going to need a little bit of this, but what I'm going to do is it's easier to hold and solder while I have this long piece rather than try to take a tiny little piece and solder it'll just it'll just stick to your soldering iron and won't come off so first I'll get a little bit of solder on this wire and the rest of the wire will get hot but I'm holding it kind of far up you know, it's getting warm right now but I just want to get a little bit of solder on it so it's easier to deal with. Yeah, it's a little bit warm. So I'm going to put it down and give it a couple seconds to cool off. Maybe hold it in front of a fan. Okay. I've got it soldered to the board. Now I need to solder the antenna to the new wire. And if you heat this up too much, this is going to fall off. Um, so that's why it's nice to have the long piece and I can kind of... Yeah, and don't touch this because that's going to be really hot. Okay. There we go, and then some snips to trim that off. A little messy looking, but you don't have to deal with it. Look at it. Oh, no, it broke right off. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Just grab it and wiggle it and see if it's going to break off. So, now that I've cut it, it's going to be a little tricky, but... Okay, hopefully that'll hold. I don't really like the looks of it. It's like the solder isn't wrapped around the wire put on. Usually I use smaller gauge wire because um, a really small gauge would still work. You're just trying to get the solder to jump across between the, 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 the solder point and up to your antenna wire. And the little gauge wire will help, you know, kind of bridge the solder give it something to grab onto. So then I have a little lump of solder plus the wire you added so the smaller gauge would work. And I'm also going to reinforce this with something better than glue. Let me put it back together. So, now that that's done and it's it's attached, it's not breaking off easily. So I've got this just craft foam sh adhesive sheets doesn't really have to be adhesive if you just have the thin foam or maybe you have you know window trim foam or any kind of uh, foam this this is kind of a little bit dense but it's thin so if you have the window stuff it would be thicker but it would be more flexible so it'd squish a lot more so I'm just cutting a piece off and I'll stick it in there but if you don't have the adhesive stuff you could just put it in it would just be a little harder to assemble um, without it falling out of place. So I put a little bit of foam down there. And again, on the other side, this is um, really only touches at the ends because it's um, curved down. So the antenna is not even going to touch the foam in the middle. So you, if you, you could put a small piece up here and there or whatever. So now when I put the antenna back in, 
when the board with the antenna, right? It'll be sandwiched in those two pieces of foam when you put it all back together, and then it won't be able to wiggle and break off again in the future. Um, and quickly, now that I just thought of it, the um, the spring, the battery on this this model with uh, it's got four AAA batteries. Um, all those models with the four AAA batteries, and it has the two springs on each end, right? So these are connected together. That one's busted off, so it's supposed to look like that. And they're connected together, but it is connected to this tracing. So when I was test early on, when I started working on these, I was trying to connect power up to here, and the remote wouldn't work. And eventually I figured out it has to have the power go through this connector and it does something with that the power on just two batteries. So it's two batteries are about three volts. So it's it's using three volts for something. And then you've got five to six volts um, with the four batteries to power the rest of it. So you can't, um, you know, if you do end up breaking your bat back spring here you can't get fancy and wire in a battery pack or something to these um, if you um, anytime you're working on these remotes I mean these look clean and shiny I, I see there's no battery old battery leaks here where this is just kind of you this is the one I just cleaned up but um, there's some stuff under there we want to get rid of that with a q-tip and isopropyl alcohol because um, eventually that'll eat through. It might take years and years, but or it might take another week. Maybe it's already been there for two years. Um, and it's going to eat through this white, eat through the green, get to a circuit, and cause problems. So you want to clean all that stuff up. Um, if you have Deoxit, Deoxit D100L, um, excellent cleaner, and it helps reduce the corrosion from growing, you know, because it'll, anything you leave behind will just keep causing problems. So I'm assuming, you know, there's some probably under here or it might be, uh, some might have gotten under this IC chip. There's some right there on the leads there, some corrosion I can see. So um, this really doesn't, <clears throat> cause problems with electronics to leave there. So I'm just wetting it down. Um, I could clean these springs with it. You can clean the springs with uh, a small file or an emery board to some extent. Like, you know, it's just nasty in there. And you, a lot of times I'll see it even worse. You know, this spring is dirty. Really, the battery only touches the end, but um, if it's corroded, it's just going to keep... It's just like rust. It'll just keep going takes a long time um, but it will cause problems someday so deoxit that <clears throat> and that's pretty much it now hopefully your base unit radio isn't broken the remote because that's just I don't know that's a big deal and it's heavy to ship it around. It's a really hard job to repair, so I don't know if anyone will do it. I don't really want to do it. And uh, unfortunately, they're all going to fail with age and use. Um, capacitors, depending on their use, uh, will just eventually blow out like a light bulb. They get slowly get weaker and weaker and weaker. Um, and in the case of the base unit, the capacitors for the, you know, remote control reception are having issues after 20 years, whatever. Um, and it's, it, they're, you know, you see you replace your unit with another old radio, and even if the remote works now, it, it's a ticking time bomb. But uh, hopefully this will help you fix some of your remotes. Um, 
Uh, one last thing, I don't know if you want to get into this, but I've, I've had several people send me these remotes and the enter button is broken off. Like the rubber, they pushed it so much that the rubber broke off. And um, you can't glue it back on. Nothing will glue back on to rubber. So you cannot glue anything to the rubber. You just make a mess. Glue will break off and crack. Um, I have repaired it with pins by carefully, like, sticking a pin through there into the underside of the enter. Like, I'd go all the way through the pin to hold that enter button in place, but then still allow it to flex enough to, you know, activate the button when you use it. I've done a couple of those because there's nothing else to do other than get another remote. You can't buy that. You can't glue it. Um, so I think that's everything I can think of. If I have some other ideas, I'll put it in the comments. Um, so thanks. Good luck.